Hi, in this video we're going to explore the differences that you can choose from when it comes to developing mobile apps. So whether you would like to choose a cross-platform solution or one that's called native, this is the topic here, which one works for you? Hi, my name is Shad Sluter and I teach software development and computer science at Grand Canyon University. This is part of a course called Native Applications for Android Phones. And so one of the subjects here is why are we using Kotlin and native programming in this course? So if you've seen the introduction, you know that we have a whole lot of topics that are coming up. So we're here in the first corner here, the gray box, which is mobile app choices. Why would you choose one language over another? So that's the question we're trying to answer in this video. So first of all, what is native and what's native about it and why are we using it in this course? So when you're programming a phone, you can choose multiple types of languages, frameworks, and software programming tools. When we talk about native, we are compiling a app to run on a specific operating system. So that means it's targeted directly at Android or at iOS, which is from Apple. So those are the two main ones, but in the past there, of course, have been others. So when you work for an Apple programming language, you're working with Swift. Swift is a language like C or C++, kind of that format. And the tool that you normally would use when you're developing a Swift application is Xcode. Now Xcode looks like Visual Studio or Android Studio, or maybe if you're into VS Code, you know, it's an IDE. And so this is Apple's tools, for Apple's phones, and that's why it's called native. Now, if you're working in the Android world, you're going to be targeting the Android uh, Studio as your IDE, and your preferred language is probably Kotlin. Now, you can use Java. However, Google and uh, Oracle have been in lawsuits for many years, and uh, Google would like to go to Kotlin completely and abandon uh, Java if they can. Uh, Kotlin and Java both compile to the same code, the same bytecode, so they'll run on the Java virtual machine. However, Kotlin is um, a new improved version of Java, you might call it. And so if you're following me in my course right now in this series, you're going to see us developing all of our programming in Kotlin, which is native for Android. Well, what is cross-platform? Well, cross-platform really means you have these two choices, these two dominating operating systems. One choice that you could use to develop an app in two different platforms at the same time is called Flutter. So Flutter is the search term that most people will use. The language itself is called Dart. So Flutter is the framework, Dart is the language. What's it do? So when you're done uh, writing your code, you can compile it and one version will go to Apple and the other will go to Android. And uh, supposedly native will work on e each of these and you won't notice any difference. There are some drawbacks and some issues that uh, people come up with when they're trying to do dual uh, compiling. But uh, the goal here is to save money. You can have one development team, you can have one set of code to maintain and uh, hopefully get the same results at the end. Another tool that has been around a long time is using C Sharp. You could use Xamarin in the past, which was a company acquired by Microsoft and then uh, migrated into Visual Studio. And since then, they've renamed it as the MAUI framework, which is uh, the ability to write an application like you're used to seeing in, in Visual Studio and uh, like the Forms apps that you would build for Windows, um, except this time you can compile it to run on a desktop. You can compile it to run on an Android, a tablet, or a phone, as well as Apple. And so this is the least of the favorites, it seems. It's the least popular. I personally don't have a lot of experience with it, even though C Sharp is one of my favorite languages. Um, put me in the comments to know uh, whether or not I'm missing out on Maui or Xamarin. Another tool that is pretty popular, or at least uh, seems to be, is using JavaScript and uh, a framework like React to then compile into a phone app. So this is a certainly a square peg into a round hole kind of a solution because JavaScript was designed to run in a browser. React was uh, kind of a, a superscript of that to make it 
uh, work better in a browser, and then they've tried to wedge it into Android development. So they call it React Native because it supposedly compiles to native code, but it's not native. But it's popular, so if you're looking for a choice on tutorials, this may be an option. It depends on if your company that you work for uh, wants you to learn this or not. Um, where I work at Grand Canyon University, we have elected uh, not to use this as one of our tutorials. So our students will graduate without this knowledge unless they specifically go and study this on their own, which some students do when they develop their senior project. And uh, it works out for them. Uh, the feedback I get is mostly frustration because it promises more than it can deliver. But it is a viable choice if you want to create a phone app that will um, compile to both Android and Apple. Let's get a reality check on how popular these languages are. So I'm at Google Trends, which is a nice tool that allows you to see how often a term has been searched for on Google. And so you can see that I'm looking in the United States for the past five years. So blue is the uh, Kotlin language, and you can see that it's uh, somewhere in the middle. And then about 2021, it seems to take off in popularity, and it's even with the other options. Swift is the language of choice if you are building an iOS app. That's native as well. And you can see Swift was really popular, and it's kind of, um, you know, in the middle now. And Flutter is the newer guy to town, you might say. So yellow, you can see, was almost non-existent five years ago and it is picked up to be um, right up there with the other two leaders. And Xamarin um, has always been kind of the trailer, and it just gradually loses popularity. And I'm sure if I searched for Maui right now, it wouldn't, might not even register. Let's see, how, how, how popular is this compared to a term like Java, which is one of the most popular programming languages out there? You can see that general purpose programming dominates um, any mobile search terms that you're going to do. So if you're into mobile development, you're certainly in a niche area, even though mobile apps are super popular. Uh, let's, uh, let's take out Xamarin or maybe uh, change it to uh, C Sharp. What does that do? So C Sharp is also popular. And, uh, you know, it's not as much as Java. Uh, let's compare it to somebody else. Let's, uh, let's try Python, for example. And you'll see that uh, probably the most popular programming language in the world dominates Java as well. So it's all relative, right? So Kotlin, Swift, Flutter, those are valid choices when it comes to building a mobile app. But if you're, uh, if you're just trying to become a general programmer, then uh, go to web development and learn Java or Python or C Sharp and JavaScript. And uh, your, your job prospects will be big, um, even though you, know, you might be interested in being a Kotlin developer someday. Let's take a look at two other indexes. So TOB is... Um, also measuring the number of popular um, programming languages. So you can see that uh, it's not maybe the best language, but it's certainly Python is the, the most popular. It's used by a lot of people, C, C Sharp, Java. No surprises there in the top. Uh, where do we find the first uh, language for developing anything with uh, iOS apps? There it is. So down there is Swift. And uh, anything below that, we're going to come to, I'm looking for um, Kotlin. There it is. So 28. So it's not the most uh, high end. And Dart is down there. Let's also compare um, Stack Overflow. They do an annual survey. They have a different slant on things. They are very focused in on web developers. And so no surprise that JavaScript and HTML are at the top. So where do we find Kotlin? It's down here. It looks like it's about 10, 12, 13 down. And Swift is below that. So, um, you know, they're data points. Not one survey is the right one, but they give you an idea of maybe where you'll be able to find a job. So you, you came to this video and you probably wanted to have an answer. Like, which, which one should I pick? What's the best solution? So I'll give you the recommendation for what we teach at our school. So we're going to have three different uh, classes in a minor for uh, mobile development. The uh, native applications for Kotlin is the uh, first choice. Um, we don't teach Apple because uh, if you want to build a mobile app for an Apple phone, you have to have a Mac operating system, or in other words, a MacBook. And uh, not all students, or well, hardly any students uh, have that. And also it's more expensive because I, I believe it's like $100 to be able to register on the App Store to be able to publish an app. 
which is also a tough barrier to entry. So for our point of view, uh, teaching students who are not invested in any one technology, Android's a good start. And then the second class that we teach is going to be uh, Flutter with uh, Dart, which is a nice cross-platform app. And then the third class, the more advanced class, we um, had a strong debate to say, should we learn some of the advanced features in native or some of the advanced features in Flutter? And really, it's a toss-up between the two, and I think we're going to go with Flutter in the, in the end, just because it's um, cross-platform and widely used. Uh, but I think you could make a good choice either way. Now, if you have an Apple and you're really invested in iOS apps, uh, they're super popular. Uh, you just have to have the right equipment to use it. So my personal experience is pick a native um, application for your first try. You'll have uh, a straightforward approach. All your tools will work correctly, and you'll be able to have success. Now, once you've, once you've figured out so maybe some Kotlin and Android apps, then uh, maybe explore some of the cross-platform options as well. But really, ask your boss and look at the situation where your company is, which will help you a lot. You can do it with all these different options, but um, I would say native is a good for first choice if you're a new programmer to apps. Now, if this is interesting to you, then make sure that you subscribe because we're going to go on to the next section, which is about introducing Kotlin and how that might be different than other languages that you've worked with before. And that will put us on track to become uh, app developers using Android. So we'll see you in the next video real soon.